Lightning and Hallman, it's Miles, your producer. I'm hmm? letting you know that you need to make this intro quick because we have a jam-packed show. So don't screw around. I didn't know that we had a producer. Oh, Miles, I, who are you? What, what do you do? Was that all about? Hmm, strange. Did you fire Alice and we now have Miles. Yeah, Miles, uh, did, did Alice has been uh, relieved of her duties. Hmm. hmm. All well, right. or more so that the website doesn't function properly anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you found a new voice I, uh, to chastise uh, wait, us. Vo- what, voice? How dare you? This is Miles, oh. our producer. All right. All right. Miles, answer me this. Who is booked for this show? Thanks for asking. You have Sam Lowe from SD Wheel. And you'll also notice that you both have frosty cold Dr. Peppers in front of you. Wow. Whoa. I like Miles. <laughs> By the way, Miles has a way better inflection. Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost uh, creepily human like. <laughs> I know, right? It's weird. <laughs> All right. Well, nice to meet you, Miles. I mean, thanks, Miles. Welcome to the show, our uh, first third employee. Mm hmm. I'm Lightning, and he is Holman. Welcome to the Truck Show Podcast number 874. Actually, uh, I was checking on this before the show, and I didn't get a chance to uh, to finish checking, mm-hmm. but I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm-, I'm Can you get to it? What? This is uh, episode 31 of uh, season two. Yeah. And also our uh, 299th- episode including all the bonuses so we are on the eve of 300 of these mfers <laughs> <laughs> can you believe we've done 300 of these shows and some of Dang. our listeners have listened to all of them uh, i think we have a letter was it in last week's or this one anyway they said they listened to all of them twice that's mental. <laughs> it's a little That's bit freaking a mental. little bit wrong. I mean, we love. I you haven't guys. listened to each of these twice. Love you so much. I Unless would give you, you a high five, uh, a, 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 a high ten, Listen, and a if hug. You, if you consider listening to the show while we record it, and then mm-hmm. listening to one more time to get all the um, sh- and uh, that you missed, dude, don't do that. Then I've listened to it twice. Okay. Listen, it's the Truck Show Podcast. We're happy to have you on board with us. We would like a five-star review. We're going to sh- right out of the gate. Normally, right. we save that for the end of the show, but if some of you don't make it to the end, go to the Apple Podcast app and give us five freaking stars, why don't you? It doesn't cost you anything to listen to the show, right? Yeah, so do- just do it for, for, for your man, Lightning, here. Just do it for your boy, Sean Holman, all right? Five stars in the Apple Podcast app. Get us uh, over the 1,050 mark. Yeah, we're at 1,030 right now, everybody. So uh, Make them funny. We want to laugh at them, okay? Yeah. Make fun of us. It's all good. So what did you think of our uh, five-star party? We, we we haven't had one of those. We keep talking about it, but we no, the, have uh, it. Banks, Banks Power. Oh, the the summer yes, party? The yeah. 2023 20, Banks, summer Banks jam? summer 23, yes. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, you think yeah, so? Yeah, that was cool. Now, are you saying I mean, you put because, me to work the whole oh, wait, time. Wait, wait, stop. Are you saying that because it's me, or did you actually have a good time? Uh, other than being put to work, I had a great time. The food was great. The people were great. It was great to see all the Banks employees. All the bank's customers, people with a ton of different vehicles. There was uh, Sean Moore came with his crazy turbocharged Beetle. I've had my uh, Wrangler 392. There Did you was see uh, Griffin Seidenfeld with his uh, crazy Apache, his, what, 49 yeah. Apache and, with a crazy LS? And Kibby came out with his uh, Chevy truck. Dude, and Ryan he, Kibby doesn't go anywhere. Like and, that he came, was, and he came to banks. Hey, did you see Dermax Rhino? Uh, I heard Dude, him, but I did not see him. Freaking Ryan, sorry, Dermax Rhino, drove up from South San Diego. Dude. Like two and a uh, half that's, hours that's a to drive. get there. Like How that's about a big our, deal. Our buddy Matt D'Andrea, who I got a chance to talk to for about thirty minutes about uh, business, which you was mean pretty cool. Car cast Matt yep. D'Andrea. Yep, yep. the uh, moderator, and then also um, super fast Matt. Which, by the way, I didn't get a chance to talk to him because Gail was talking to him for about four hours. And uh, <laughs> Matt D'Andrea and I were off to the side laughing. I go, you know, if I get a, a, a way to jump in there, I'm going to tell him I heard you're super fast. And then we both giggled. Super fast Matt. Most of you are on YouTube. Please do yourself a favor and watch Super Fast Matt. He's a former mechanical engineer. He's got a great sense of humor. He is articulate and so fun to watch. And he has all these freak show vehicles. He's going to Bonneville. He's going to race in a BMW motorcycle engine powered streamliner and try to go like 200 miles an hour, something absurd. Super Fast Matt. He's great. He'll be your new favorite YouTube channel. All right, well, uh, I think my highlight of the party was uh, finally getting a chance to uh, to eat and then having some ice cream. Now, wait a minute. Did you have, then, wait, wait. Did you have the tacos? Did you have yes, the burgers? Yes. 
Oh, you had them all? And then I had the pizza. Uh-huh. And the pizza was really good. The pizza was good. Oh, J.J. Jones from yeah, yeah. Uh, Four Wheeler? Uh, nope. Hot Rod now. Oh, he's Hot Rod now? Yeah. Okay. He must have had Four like, Wheeler doesn't exist. I'm just, I, I don't know if you're listening, KJ, but you had like six pieces of pizza, bro. No, he he did. He was, he was <laughs> definitely. I had, I had some with him. And then I had the uh, Handel's ice cream. Uh, and then you and I had the ill-fated decision to jump up and down in a bounce house after mm. that. And I thought I was going to puke all over you. I thought you were going to puke all over me as well. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. like, that was a bad idea. And I watched the video and it's bad. I'm not going to use it. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we shot uh, we shot some video there for for Banks, and uh, we Holman and I were bouncing up and down in a monster truck bounce house, and we thought it'd be funny, and it wasn't. So, was there an outtake that's going to go on the Truck Show podcast oh, yeah. Uh, website? Yeah, no, we, we could use it. Yeah, yeah. Banks can't use it, but no. we could use it. No, I didn't do it for Banks; it did for us. Okay, that's yeah. usable for us because we're we, we have a very low bar for quality <laughs> entertainment. Uh, that's true. Uh, fortunately, our friends over at Nissan don't realize that, and they want to uh, continue to be part of the podcast. <laughs> don't say that um, out loud, dude. No, I'm saying we love them. We love we that do. they love who we are. Okay. We're unapologetically us. And uh, if you want an unapologetic truck that is reliable and durable and dependable, you want to head over to NissanUSA.com or down to your local Nissan dealer. We can check out the Nissan Frontier. Or of course, the Half Ton and Half Ton Plus Nissan Titan and Titan XD. They have the industry's best five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Oh, and in news, there's a little bit of Nissan news coming up. Really? Yeah. So uh, stay tuned can for that. Can you give me a teaser? Nope, I just did. I got a question for you. Hmm. What was up with the big ass filter on Sean Moore's bug? Oh, the uh, the giant Banks big ass well big, ass, big filter ass filter on that Garrett Turbo. What was that off of? That was a truck filter, wasn't it? Yeah, that's out of a four two two four nine. Sorry, that's inside jargon. That's off of a twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen. Duramax L5P Ram Air intake. So the bug is breathing through a Duramax Ram Air intake uh, filter. Yeah, well, as big as your head. Yeah. No, it's huge. Yes. It it almost. I'm like, why is there a uh, cotton gauze wing on the back of that uh, beetle? <laughs> He's trying to make this the fastest bug in the quarter mile, I think, ever. And it's massive. I I think he's trying to do like seven eight hundred horsepower or something in this thing. Well, like it's something mean ridiculous looking. for a bug, yeah. right? And like because it's rear wheel drive and it's just going to wheelie all the way down oh, the course. Yeah, totally. There's he's no got wheelie weight on bars. the front end. He's got wheelie bars. You have I don't to. think he's going to do anything anyway. So he called me and he says, "Hey, where can I get a filter? I need a six inch ID uh-huh. uh, on the inlet side." And I said, "Whoa, okay. Oh, sorry, that'd be technically the outlet, I guess, the outlet." And I said, "We have one. That's for our Duramax." Mm-hmm. He goes. Can I borrow one? So I gave him a sample. It fit like a glove. It was perfect. And it's and then he it, gave you a truck for a dollar. And it flows more than that Volkswagen engine. No, he didn't give you a truck for a dollar. For, he did not give me a truck the, for that. No, that's how I got locked out. Same guy. Yes, they don't understand the connection. Yeah, right. So he got the best flowing filter for any Duramax truck. And if you want one too, go to bankspower.com and type in your year, make and model. We have a Banks big ass filter included with the Ram Air intake system for your truck. Uh, or can, Volkswagen. Can I buy a builder part, <laughs> get the filter separately for my mm. own weird project? Oh, you know what? Actually, we do sell those a la carte. We, uh, yeah, I forgot we did. Yeah, so if you want a big-ass filter <laughs> for whatever you're building, go to bankspower.com. And if I want wheels and tires, do I also go to... Oh, wait, no. no. SD Wheel. So we got to welcome uh, SD Wheels to the show. SD Wheel is going to be with us here uh, for a little bit. And uh, we actually are going to be talking to the marketing director, Sam Lowe, tonight on the show. But uh, if you are looking for the largest selection of in-stock wheels and tires, no matter what your build style is, they've got you covered. They actually will mount, balance, and ship the wheels and tires to you for free. Now, when Holman says big selection... Massive. So when you we'll think, get into it. It's, okay. it's hundreds of brands, it seems like. I mean, it's it's every name you ever heard about and a bunch you probably haven't. It's but, an ocean of brands. And that's both on the wheel side, the tire side, and also the performance product side. You can head over to sdwheel.com, find the right wheel and tire package for your vehicle. You can find out if it's going to fit or if it's going to rub, and you can skip the tire shop, save yourself hundreds of dollars and all that hassle. Again, sdwheel.com, and we are proud to be associated with them for this uh, run here on the podcast. Not bad, guys. You've only droned on a little. Get to the intro, please. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck. Because truck rides with <laughs> The Truck Show. We have the lifted. We have the lowered and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel. The Truck Show, The Truck Show, oh, oh. It's The Truck Show with your hosts, 
Lightning, and Holman. That Miles is uh, kind of snarky, isn't he? <laughs> He's a little snarky, yeah. Okay, it's chicken. I was going to choose an English accent, but then I thought, yeah, I'll just make yeah, him American. Yeah, that's pretentious. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, I'd rather have a snarky American. Mm-hmm. Uh, keeps us in line better. All right, uh, so we have to dial up our uh, new friend, Sam Lowe, from Are we SMU buddies? Wheel. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Not only are we buddies, but we're friends. Then let's dial up our new friend. I wonder if they'll pick up. Hey, guys, this is Sam. Sam, Lightning and Holman Truck Show Podcast. What's How you doing? What's happening? I am doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing outstanding. Yo, the truck show! <laughs> who dis, who dis, who the hell is this? A truck show interview you don't want to miss. We talk to top dogs <laughs> in the industry. How'd you blow up? How'd you come to be? Who dis, who dis? Truck show represent. So the who dis is SD Wheel. Now, Sam... How long have you been with SD? Um, so I've been with SD for about two and a half years now. Okay. So for those of our listeners that have not, they're not familiar with SD, give us the uh, the background on the company. Sure. So um, SD Wheel uh, really started kind of in the Chicago area, and it's a uh, you know started out small as a lot of companies do, and grew and grew and grew. And now where we're at is we're part of a, a larger group of brands uh, called Enthusiast Enterprises. So we kind of have our different uh, brands and divisions for kind of the different niches in the automotive field. And what we do, um, SD Wheel, really creative title, uh, our name with wheel is we sell a lot of wheels, tires and suspension. That's kind of our specialty. So uh, if you want wheels, I mean, we got them. It is absolutely insane uh, what we have access to and not just – you know, we can get from other other people warehouses, but what we actually have in our own warehouse, we make the investment to actually bring the inventory in with wheels and tires. And our big thing is we'll mount, balance, and ship for free to you. So you can skip the tire shop and just install right on your rig and go from there. And honestly, some places just don't mount certain size tires to wheels. And we have some crazy stuff that comes through the line and we'll do anything for you. Uh, we'll make it really easy and ship it fast for you. So what I'm understanding is that you guys not only have a large selection, but it doesn't matter what the build style is, whether it's more of an off-road style or like a, a southeast Florida truck style with, you know, big old hoops that You're most tire like, shops like will a go. set of 30s? <laughs> yeah, a set of 30s, and they're like, nah, nope. we're not going to touch those. Yep. Uh, we've got everything. Like, it'd be great to have you guys out sometime and, you know, check out our, our warehouse and our lines. We've got multiple lines coming through. And when you're watching us come down the line, I love taking a walk down there because you'll see, like just like you said, some big chrome 30s, maybe some even like stretch or like rubber band tires on there, and then some 16s, some huge like Falcon Wild Peaks, you know, off-road tires, all just going in line um, and going down to uh, everywhere in the country. And you guys really do have a lot of different brands, uh, Fuel, Ultra, Archon, RBP, uh, TIS Wheel, H-R-A. Koenig, H-R-A. Anthem. H-R-A. Panther, HRE, Inky, HRE, Ro- Rotiform, <laughs> and of course, Lightning is HRE. Yeah. I mean, that's just a name of yep. few. I mean, you guys cover all of the popular stuff, and then you also have your own wheel brands uh, and tire brands in there as well. You, you uh, On the tire side, you've got Michelin, Accelera, Americus, Amp Tires, uh, Suspension, Accuair, Airlift, Bill Stein, which is a favorite of us. I've never heard of any of these brands. BDS, Belltech. I mean, you just go <laughs> down the list, and right. uh, you guys have all sorts of stuff. Okay, but I, I think yeah. before you weigh in on that, hold on a second, Sam. I, I think we've kind of skipped a very important part of the, the puzzle here is that you kind of glossed over, well, we started small and we grew big. But the reason you grew big so fast and the fact that many of our listeners probably know who SD Wheel is, and if they don't, they will, is because you had that really unique business plan in the beginning. Was we've, that to sell wheels and tires to as many people as possible? I mean, I, I think that was probably yeah. it, but I don't think that, that was the plan. I think he was just, he had a really nice, so can you tell us about the founder and how that got started? Yeah, so uh, like with Steve Hamilton and, and some of the other uh, owners as well, it, you know, it's a group of owners that we have. And the cool thing is uh, we're enthusiasts, so we're car and you know, truck people. And that whole buying process is, is really difficult or was really difficult. And these guys figured out a way to make it easy where you enter your make model and it says, hey, here's what's going to fit. Um, and there's no guesswork to it. And if you don't believe us, you can just call us. And we have real humans that answer the phones and they'll guide you through that process and probably nerd out on your build with you. Um, that happens. <laughs> but uh, they, they really made it easy. And then the big thing, too, is like they're, you know, bringing in 
multiple brands from all over the country, but then also create our own warehouse where we can pair those wheels with tires. Because as an enthusiast, that tire shop can be kind of hard to get past, especially if you have, you know, wheels and tires, especially like off-road stuff that's not mounted up and you have to get it in your truck, you know, or your car or whatever you have and get it to there. It's just really hard. So make it easy for people and they buy and we grew and grew and grew and grew. And it's just, it's really cool to see the continued growth with that. Is it true that the UPS guy hates you? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know, but uh, I think he maybe hates the guy who ordered 30s with some like yeah. giant tires right. on it. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> I think though before SD, I, I'm not aware of a company that cataloged or offered all the fitments that were possible. They would say, all right, if you have a Toyota Tacoma, the, here's the two sizes that we're aware of, that here's the offset, here's the uh, you know the, the diameter of the wheel that we think you should run to fit over the brakes, and here's two, two or three size tires. And that's it. And you, yep. guys, you guys went full hog. Like, this is everything that we think that can fit on your truck safely. And nobody else was doing that. And then through social media, you guys got really big explaining this fits, this fits, this doesn't fit. This fits, this fits, this does not fit. And I think that just exploded for you. Am I, am I on the right track here? Yeah, absolutely. And we kind of even taking it one step further. We even tell you what might kind of fit, but it's going to rub. And if you're okay with that, that's cool. Or if you want to make some cuts and, you know, or do an aftermarket bump or whatever, we know it'll fit. The other thing too is not all these are stock ride heights. You know, you got lowered trucks, lifted trucks, you know, stock, just level trucks, everything. And you put that in and that changes those parameters. Or now you can fit a 35 or maybe only before you could fit a 33, but now you can do it with this wheel combination. So that's the, the kind of bread and butter to make it easy. Yeah, so a lot of applications, like with my truck, for example, I remember Holman and I were looking for wheels for my truck, and all the combos to go up to a 37-inch tire would rub, and then we found the right wheel-tire combo. I could get a 37, but because it was such a it was a positive offset, so kind of the wheels were sucked in, I have, yep. no, I have no rubbing at all, and that's the information that you guys offer. And it's crazy because we always talk about on the show that both Holman and I are on all these Facebook groups and all these old school forums. And the number one question everyone's always posting is, well, these wheels and tires, does it rub? Does it rub? I'm like, dude, just call SD wheel, please. Just call SD wheel. (laughs) I'm in those, like some Facebook groups and forums and stuff. And I see people literally screenshot our website and go, Hey, I found these. You guys think they'll fit? And be like, yeah, it says it does. It's going to fit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you go to uh, the Facebook page, uh, which is uh, SD wheel, it's interesting to see that they're just like us. Uh, Four point nine out of five stars on their uh, on their ratings. Oh, who's the one? Yeah. A-hole? Although, although we're I like know. the eleven hundred range, they have yeah. almost two thousand, so we're behind them on on reviews. Yeah, yeah. You need our people to step up. Uh, but here's some of the comments: good business, good marketing. Oh, there's one guy uh, came on here was talking about ordering uh, wheels and going back for more. Uh, how fast the shipping was, um, customer service. A lot of customer service comments within there uh, where people are like, yeah, I had a great experience. And uh, it's that's always great to see. Especially when you know, you're know spending you know potentially a couple thousand dollars on something. Like it's not a, it, well, hopefully it's not just a, uh, I'm going to just buy this. You know, it's a process a lot of people think about and you want to have trust in that and have a good experience through it because that's a lot of money. How many customers are growing with you? Like, okay, I just bought a used Tacoma and then I buy a set through SD Wheel or one of the sister brands. Maybe I'm at custom, yep. custom offsets or something like that, right? That's part of the enthusiast network, correct? Yep. Okay. And then I can now I can afford a Tundra, right? And so yep. d- totally different wheel tire combo. Are they growing with you? Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of the fun thing to see is we're like a lot of our brands are actually the, the first place a lot of people are buying their wheel and tire packages, like the first aftermarket set. Um, because you Google it, you find it, hey, we make it easy. And they buy through us and making it easy, they, they'll repeat and buy through us. And obviously that's kind of our goal. And, you know, we'll, we'll sell tires too because you run through the tires, maybe like the wheels, just repeat purchase like that. And it's it's cool to kind of grow and have a, a family of customers and, you know, not just buy for once and see you later. Well, I think it's great. The You know, we, we talked about how many brands you have, but you guys were one of the first to actually step up and do aftermarket sizes, really in both directions, right? I mean, there's there's plenty of mail order tire and wheel companies out there, but they weren't servicing the enthusiast. And to your point about being enthusiasts is you guys have the information on what hits, what fits, and also so oh, many well, different I like choices. Did you, did you just make that up? What hits, what fits? Uh, it's from, I uh, like that. That was good. Yeah, I, uh, that was from Four Wheeler Magazine. My uh, my previous home, we had a uh, uh, a series of stories we called What Hits, What Fits. 
Uh, I'm giving you authorization, uh, Sam, to use that. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> I, I, I don't have it because it was Holman's, but so you guys have some pretty like hardcore old school brands too, just not the the new stuff like Fuel, but you have Centerline, you've got uh, TSW, like Krager. Like, so it's not yep. just Roush, you know, you got things like that, you know, from, from some of those companies that are like OE companies that do upfits and have like an aftermarket following. Um, dude, Anki Foos, Fond yeah, Metal. Yeah, Anki's awesome. Fittipaldi? Oh, dude. Fitty, Fitty Indies. Dude, I had Fitty, Fitty Indies. Fitty, yes, I had Fitty Indies. On, wait, that's the five spoke, right? <laughs> yeah. I had those on my 1980, what it was that? Yeah, but, 84 do, Accord, but do they have hatchback. the uh, the Ronal uh, Gummy Bear or uh, the Daisies? I, don't, uh, I hope not. <laughs> I, so we got Heart Wheels, though, from Heritage, if you want something kind of crazy. We got those. Uh, Heart Wheels, wheel too. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those are actually, like, they unva- or, uh, launched those for, like, the Jeep market a little while back, and it exploded in popularity. I was like, oh, go figure. Yeah. And then you've got some of the uh, the new kind of exploding lines, like JTX Forged, which when I went to uh, Florida Truck Meet, um, yep. last year, JTX was all over the place. Kind of like, I think they're taking over where American Force was kind of leaving off. I, I feel like uh, American Force kind of, I don't know, once they joined the Wheel Pros brands, the marketing shifted. Well, the, di- the, dif- the difference was, was they were a standalone company that had a private owner that put all their eggs into that marketing basket and really became big. And then they got bought by a VC who who gobbled them up and then there's different priorities within the company. And so that, that happens in the automotive aftermarket space. So it's good to see another brand kind of come in and, and take off where they left off because I think they had made great inroads into uh, pushing the boundary for truck owners. American force. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And they were, they were the go-to for some of my favorite wheels that I've I've ever owned on, on the rock crusher. So what's the process? I have a truck. I am either lifted it or maybe it's just my OE set of wheels and tires and they're just worn out and I want to do an upgrade. I go to sdwheel.com, and then what's the process for using the website to actually figure out what the right choice is? Maybe I have an idea in my mind, but I want to look at a bunch of different wheels and, and see what might be my favorite. Yeah, so uh, actually this is the way I found this job here is I was looking for new wheels and tires for my F-150 I had at the time and found SD Wheel and just entered the Meg model, found a whole bunch of stuff, and I was like, hey, you know, go to the wheel store. This is all what fits. Um, either you know, open in different tabs or like select what, which, which one you want and then go through the buying process. Um, or, you know, if you're on custom offsets, we got the gallery there. That's super popular for a way for someone to go in there and enter your make model. And you can see everything everyone else has done. You can even click one button and say, buy this exact package and it'll look just like it. How though do you navigate if you say, I want a old school five spoke wheel or I want a forged wheel? It's in a, in a you good almost way. have too much stuff. So there's almost too much. Yeah. I mean, there really is. It's all oh, it's, alphabetical. If you go to brands, it's ev- I mean, I'm seeing every every one of my favorite brands. They have, they have Voss and they have Volk, they have Weld, they have Works, they have no, KMC, they yeah, have yeah, XD, yeah. they have all my all of them. They have and rotiform. tires are just the same. BFG and Toyo Holy and Falcon crap. and on so, and on. But how do you? Other than spending a week or a month doing research, <laughs> is there whoa, a- Whoa, 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 You know as well as I do that most enthusiasts love spending a week or a month doing research. That's true. So, <laughs> so I think this site's perfect oh, yeah. for that. Is there, is there like, a hot, yeah. like, a, like a tip that like a secret- For navigating? Is to find, for navigation? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you some insider information here for just you and your listeners uh, uh, or anyone who's, who's going to go on there. So um, what I like to do is if you kind of, if you're an enthusiast, you're like, all right, I kind of know what I want, but you know how it is. You want to look, you want to browse and see what else is there. Um, so you can either go with the filters, go really exact to what you're looking for or open them up a little bit. And there's tons of different filters, either whether it's price, size, finish, brand, all of that are within there. And you can choose as many as you want or as few as you want to kind of help narrow those choices down. Because as you guys are saying, it's insane. Like how much the catalog. I mean, it's hard to find something that we don't have truthfully on there. Now, so what is the process? I have found my wheels after six months of debating <laughs> which ones I'm going to get, right? And, yep. then I've, and I've chosen the tire and I've, I've confirmed that that fit meant uh, I, I like I got cold feet. So I called and you guys, nope, nope, it fits. We've run those before. Buy them. So I do. When they show up, are they on a pallet? How do I put them on? Do they come with lug nuts? Yeah. So if you go through, you buy everything, it's going to, if you get wheels and tires and they're mounted and balanced, um, well, we do that free, obviously. We'll ship it to you. It'll come on a pallet. Obviously, kind of determine, like, it matters, you know, what size you're getting for how it's going to be delivered. But you'll have a truck pull up. 
and they'll unload it for you. And then you'll get the wheel entire package, put it right on your truck. And you can choose to have it come with TPMS installed, like it's all during the checkout process with lug nuts or any of those other accessories like ceramic coating too, to make it easier to keep those wheels clean. Uh, but whatever you choose, it'll come all packaged in one neat package. You unwrap a whole bunch of strand wrap and you're there. Wow. So wait a minute. I didn't even think about TPMS. That's like a whole nother wrinkle. Yep. Oh, so yeah. you have to offer all the different makes and models of TPMS sensors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's something that we have to do and obviously keep up on, too, uh, because it's you know ever evolving. And, you know, obviously all modern vehicles have that. So that's a big thing for us to offer as well, because you go to a tire shop. That's an added price, too, for you. And you have to get that program and go through the whole hassle. How do I? Well, and then I was going to add also when it comes to TPMS, a lot of people are going to sell their OE takeoffs. And they're less valuable if you rob the TPMS sensors to put them on yep. your new wheels. So the uh, fact that they offer them yep. means you're going to get more money and you can offset the cost of your new wheels by selling your old ones because they come complete. That's that's uh, something you people don't think secret. about. Yeah. <laughs> you found the secret. That's it. That's yeah. It's funny because a lot of people will say, post stuff. It's like, I found these new wheels on custom offices or SD, post them for sale, and they're, they're showing what they're trying to get. Yeah, no, Holman's a pro at offer up. Like, he's he's no joke. Like, <laughs> yeah, I always get the you guy. You've got a good area for that. Dude, I was $50 away from some dude, and he goes, you going to walk away from this deal for 50 bucks? I'm like, you going to walk away from this product for 50 bucks? And it was like a standoff. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, no, that's my told you. I already came down for you. That's my bottom line. He's like, well, I can't do it. I go, Really, you can't do fifty more dollars. I go, we we were three hundred and fifty more expensive, and we got down to here. He's like, nope. A week later, he's like, hey, those the proc still available? <laughs> Did like, you really? Yep. Oh, yeah, he came back. That's right. <laughs> wow, we waited how long? A week? A week? A week? He was wow. sweating it. He, he yeah. was sweating it. Yeah. And then I, uh, well, put- I knew he was in the ether, so I dropped the price like fifty bucks off the listing. And so that guy's going, oh, dude. I had it less than that. He only dropped it 50 bucks. Now 100 more people are going to contact him. Boom. Yeah. You create urgency. That's how you move move the goods. How, uh, going back to TPMS, do they automatically sync with my car? I don't even know how that works. Like, I bolt the wheels on, but am I getting a light on my dashboard that says go to the dealer or what? Nope. So when you buy from us, um, we'll have you enter in, uh, you know, at the start of it or at the end of the checkout process, depending on how you found the wheels and tires, enter in your year make model. And then when you choose TPMS, we already got your information for what your vehicle is. So then when it goes through our system, we program the TPMS based on that and you're all set. Don't have to do anything once you get them. You guys also have a uh, educational section of the website uh, under blogs, which is one of your navigation drop downs. And there's actually a lot of great articles in here. Uh, top five Jeep wheels. Are OE replica wheels worth it? Which is actually a great topic because OE replica wor- wheels are a big deal, especially if you got a, a lower trim and you want your truck to look yep. nice, but you don't want to shell out all the money for either the sporty trim or the, the luxury trim. You guys have even, here's my favorite one. What is Carolina squat? Yeah. <laughs> I was, was going to say, you got to see that one. <laughs> oh, no. It says, uh, Seriously? Uh, even if you haven't heard the phrase yeah. Carolina squat, Ooh. you've probably seen these builds. <laughs> so, you know, and it's, it's great. There's a lot of people who are, who are going through there. You guys have a lot of stuff on uh, on muscle cars and JDM cars and, and even just the family hauler. You've got a, a great story on uh, what are the best snow tires for your car, truck, or SUV. So just that knowledge base from your content in, in articles under your blogs is, is going to be really valuable to somebody who is trying to figure it out. And there's fitment guides, a 21 to 22 F-150 fit, fitment guide, fourth gen Ram fitment guide. Um, so just a ton of great information for, for people to figure out. Yep. And all this stuff's written by real enthusiasts too. So it's something you know, that we verify and we're passionate about. Sometimes I can tell who wrote it depending on what brands are suggested. I'm like, you really <laughs> like 1552. So you always plug those. We all have our biases. We don't know how that works. Getting that kickback. So you're probably seeing trends arise, right? You're seeing bubble because you, you're looking at the reports yep. as the marketing director. You're seeing, all right, we sold an extra 75 sets of X wheel. Yeah. Right? Are, are you like on the bleeding edge of what's coming? And then do you guys, do you talk with the, uh, the, the planning, uh, you know, for stocking skews like, Hey, this trend, black wheels are out and bronze wheels are in or whatever the case may be. I mean, I have to imagine the amount of product you move. You've got a pretty good pulse on the industry. Yeah, I like to think we do. And since we are 
really enthusiast driven where we get kind of the people, you know, just putting a same size wheel or tire combo that's stock on their vehicle, just swapping to something aftermarket, but we get a lot of those enthusiast sizes. So a lot of times when we talk with manufacturers, whether it's wheels or tires, um, they like us because it's like, you guys sell the interesting stuff and like the stuff that the market's really pushing towards. Um, so we get to have those conversations and see those trends come through, whether it's, you know, colorways of wheels, styles of wheels, you know, things being more simple, uh, less busy, or when it comes to just tires, if it's like more stretch or, you know, more off-road style, just kind of what we're seeing through the market. And it is really cool to be able to sit in my spot and be able to see that. Um, Cause as a car and truck enthusiast, it's just kind of nerdy and it's cool to say, Ooh, I think this is what's going to be hot. And then you're right with all my friends and they're wrong. So let's talk about a couple of these trends. So, you know, when Holden and I started the uh, podcast back in uh, 1971, there like lava the, was cooling back then. Right, right. There was no Carolina squat thing. Uh, well, it was just for, it was, well, <laughs> no. There was. It was just in Carolina, though. Right. It, well, it was for bro, it, broke ass it, trucks. It hadn't gotten down to Florida yet, in Georgia, and where the leaf places. springs had broken, and the guy just kept yeah. rolling it. Right. Yeah. No, but anyway, like, <laughs> yeah, yep. So, like the Florida scene, really, it actually was around the time that we started the podcast five six years ago. When at that time, like twenty sixes, sixteen wide, like where the the super negative offset sticking way outside. To me. Those trucks look like a tree frog where the legs are just way out, you know, farther than the body. Is that scene going to stick around forever, do you think? Are you still really moving a lot of those wheels with a lot of lip, a lot of negative offset? What are you seeing on that particular southern look? Because it's come out here now. Like it took almost three years to make its way from like Florida, the panhandle out this way to California. Yep. Absolutely. A trend that we still see, um, you know, with that also the, obviously the lifted trucks are huge and you can fit the bigger wheels on it, but you know, the lower and more street, uh, street style truck, that's when that's kind of coming back. I mean, you look at everything that's cool 20 years ago, it kind of comes in a cycle and you know, it kind of comes through, but with more of like a modern take. So that's some of the stuff that we're seeing now. And, and the other thing, you know, that I think we've all been aware of is, you know, after 2020, it's like, everyone's like, Oh, I can go outside and go use my vehicles. So that whole kind of like overlanding off-road style um, had, was became really popular and that's really stuck through. And you can see some of the OEMs now putting some like off-road packages on vehicles that are just going to see pavement their whole life. Oh, for sure. So you're seeing like pre COVID, a lot of show trucks, guys just stunting on the beach, whatever, with huge wheels. Again, this, this is a niche, but huge wheels, rubber band tires, not really usable for off road. Are you seeing some of those same customers going to more sidewall, smaller wheel, giving up the stunting? I- I think no. With the stunters be stunting. Those guys, are, <laughs> those guys are still out there. That needs that, to be a T-shirt. Adding that to our T-shirt. Well, hold on, list. hold on a second, Sam. We got to write that down. Stunters be, be stunting. stunting. Yeah, yeah like that's that. great. There you go. Perfect. Right. So yeah, I mean those those guys, you know, are diehard, and that scene is still huge. And I think it's becoming it, that is it is growing because I mean social media, TikTok, Instagram reels, all that stuff. You, you guys see it, it helps like spread you know that sort of culture, but. Coming out of 2020, you had a whole bunch of people that may not have been enthusiasts or said they would, but they want to go do something. Or, you know, they're seeing how cool those Tacomas and Forerunners look with that off road look, even though maybe they're not going to go do that. So it kind of inspired them. So we saw a new wave of enthusiasts, I'd say, kind of come through. Um, those and that's be been kind of cool uh, to see. The- faux real wheel drive guys, the faux wheel drive yes but not not four yes. wheel, not four, four, wheel. four yeah yeah <laughs> i like that i like that 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 should be like a instead of a four wheel drive on the back of a truck I should say that that'd be, that'd be awesome <laughs> well yeah that's kind of what we're seeing and, and on the on the car side too because you know trucks are huge but on nasty we sell the cars too it's you know every scene you can imagine um it, it's growing i mean jdm is what's cool right now and we're seeing a huge resurgence in that oh dude uh my wife wants a late 80s honda hatchy like nobody's business. And back when I was a JDM and Honda guy at a, a Civic 2000 Civic SI brand new that I bought, my first car Ooh. was the 87 Honda Accord. All my buddies had hatches with B16 or B18 swaps in them. And every once in a while you see that. There's actually a, a, a friend of ours, uh, Randy, who uh, used to be on one of the discovery programs uh, as an appraiser. And he just found example of the two engine Mugen uh, CRX. Wow. And he's Whoa. restoring it right now and detailing it. And so, Whoa. yeah, yeah, the the JDM stuff is is so rad. And if my basically my wife said, listen, if you find a hatchy and we have the money and you bring it home and it's a stick 
and it's clean and it's nice. She goes, I won't even yell at you, but I will drive it the next day. So that's the one thing that she's given me permission to buy without her, uh, without having to check with her. Nice. I know. Yeah, that's, that's that's handy. I, I want to go back to the trends that you were you, you're watching, you're following here. What are the most modified American trucks? Like, are you seeing? Ford's more modified than Chevy's, more modified than Rams. I feel like Dur like like Chevy's are more wheel and tired up than Ford's. Are we doing this again? I think so. Are we doing this where well, Lightning this. decides no, think, that no. there's one brand that is I, completely a hundred percent more modified than the others? I want to see if Sam has an opinion. Okay. So I have an answer, oh. not just an opinion. So I, I want to know what what do you guys think? Let's uh, well, let's go with this. If you listen to Lightning, he doesn't think F one fifties are modified. So here's the thing: before you answer, Sam, I believe that so Ford is always touting that it's the number one pickup truck in in America, right? If not the world, and I think yep. because the Ford F one fifty is full, uh, like every fleet, every Verizon truck is a Ford F one fifty. You know, all, it's all fleet. By the and, way, I'm standing have... by Sam because I want to do the caveat that Lightning's not going to deliver to you in his biased speech that no, he's giving no, you. No, no, no. So his I think... diatribe <laughs> is, oh, is going to be completely constructed for his very narrow point of view, and so we'll have so to fix listen, it. So listen, listen, listen. When I when I say modded, I go. Like, when caveats. I say, oh, God, yeah, yes, yes. There's a caveat. Uh-huh. <laughs> mod mod is for coolness. Mod is not for roof rack, so I can carry a ladder. All right. Mod is not a a tube on a rack so I can put a broom upside down. Truck show podcast at gmail.com. A mod is a mod. No, I a mod is something that you want. Mod stands for modification. I understand that. So you're going to take your stock vehicle (laughs) that doesn't do what it's supposed to do for you and change it. That's that's modified for a cool factor. Uh I'm mod. I'm putting suspension on so I can rock crawl. I'm buying wheels and tires because they look good. I'm buying a rack because not only do I carry my ladders and lumber to the job site, but I also carry my kayak on weekends and my paddleboard because I have one truck to do it all. And lightning, you don't get to dismiss my lifestyle. Yes, I do because. I don't think that you're. I, I don't think there's a ton of overlap between the guy that carries a kayak ah, and he has. You don't a roof think rack. that's I a, don't that's think your so. own lightning bias. <laughs> All right, I'm Sam. Kidding. Enough of lightning. Tell us what the most modified truck that you guys see at SD Wheel is. So the most modified truck that we see is actually the Ford F one fifty. That's oh, it. Hold on, my bell stuck. My bell <laughs> stuck because we have had this argument over uh-huh. and over again throughout the years. Yeah. And I cannot tell you how happy you've just made me. I Sam. think Sam's lying. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Uh let's let's see if Lightning has a prayer. What's uh-huh. number two? Uh number two is uh, what we really see is like the Silverado fifteen hundred. So from Chevy, okay. obviously. That's okay. what we see is number two. And that's because Silverado 1500 is the second most popular truck. Or is that because Lightning thinks it's already cool from the factory, more cool than uh, Ford? It is. Ah. I mean, Ford, Ford, (laughs) stock stock Ford wheels Uh. suck balls. You know it. No. There's some some nice wheels. Oh, they're weak socks. No, no, no. Like a Chevy HD that has like zero offset or I'm sorry, a high offset with a flat face on it with no texture. Well, hold on a second. I'm not saying that all Chevy wheels are awesome. I'm just saying that most Ford, Ford wheels suck. Raptor? Raptor wheels are okay-ish. Beadlock capable? Yeah, but they're not attractive. They're I, beadlock capable, I, but, but they're that's, not great looking. But that's, I, don't, I think they're good looking. They're, meh. they're bringing technology from the aftermarket to no, their wheel. No, I'm, I'm, I'm putting them on offer up, and I'm going to SDWheel.com and buy a real set right, of wheels. Well, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to weigh in here. I'm just going to say that I think Chevy has better OEM-looking wheels than Thank Ford you. does. <laughs> yes, agreed. So, yes, yes, yes. All right, see, they're they lighting also, the hash of the, his column, too. We get a little bonus point because also when we're talking like OEM replica wheels. Um, you like the snowflake, getting chrome snowflakes, you know, yeah. bigger sizes. That's like the most popular one. Uh, it's just a really cool looking wheel, especially if you want your truck to look a little bit different, but not like a really like, oh, wow, that thing's super modified sort of look. Well, I kind of like some of the OE um, replica wheels where maybe it was only offered in a 17 or an 18 from the factory and you really want that wheel, but you want a 20. It's nice to yes. have a quality replica wheel in the size you want. So it still has the same vibe. But you're getting that more performance tire, that lower sidewall, that better handling, if that's what you want. And I know there's a lot of guys like me that really do appreciate that that OE look. Sam, who's making – what brands should we be looking at for OE replicas? 
So if you actually go to our the SUVO website yep. um, and go under OE replicas, it, it truly kind of depends on what you're looking for because different brands will specialize in like different styles where you'll have multiple snowflake you know options. Or what's really popular too is for like Chargers and Hellcats is those like OEM styles, but in some bigger, larger sizes. So it kind of I hate to say it's kind of a cop out answer, but it depends what you're looking for. All right, so w- w- along the same lines, are there any up and coming wheel brands that you mm. guys are seeing that if somebody's in the market and they're like, hey, I want something different, something that's kind of freshy fresh, as Lightning would say, is there uh, some brands that are trending upward that you're seeing some more popularity as people are, are, are updating their new trucks? So our listeners can get in on the early stages. Exactly. And not look like everyone. Yeah, so it's kind of going to depend like which route you're going with, with the trucks, but um, this is going to sound like a shameful plug, not shameless, but I will say our own bland, brands, Archon and Anthem on the truck side. So Archon's like that more show style and Anthem's more of kind of the off-road look to it. Um, really growing in popularity. Archon's been super popular for a long time since it debuted with their proper directional wheels. So left and right sides um, are actually different molds. So there's they are directional and they swoop in the same way either side of the vehicle really gaining popularity and it's really cool every quarter to see that amount grow and we actually we don't just track like how many wheels we sell we actually track like to us how many trucks are on the road with those wheels and it's cool to see it grow every quarter oh, that's pretty cool i mean that that's got to give you a lot of data that i mean you would expect to have that kind of data from like a sema or somebody like that and to be able to have enough customers and really the variety that you sell it, I, I bet your data is pretty valuable to uh, partners as well yeah, I mean, we are, we're nerds. I mean, I'm a car enthusiast and truck enthusiast, but like, I'm a data nerd. And that's kind of really what we like to operate. Because you go on our website, you can see like a whole bunch of filters. You can be like, man, these guys love numbers. And yeah. we do. And, and that that's how we kind of uh, got everything going and, and keep it running the way it is. So when you roll through the SEMA show, right, which is an industry show, and you're going to go yep. to the South Hall, to the lower level on the South Hall, and do you just roll through and go, I'll take those. I'll take those. I'll take those. I'll take this entire booth. I'll take that. Like, how do you think you just take them? <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? He, he orders them, right? Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, you feel like a kid in a candy shop. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. We're like, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. Um, and you're like three booths in and it's been like an hour. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we know the it, feeling. It, it, yeah, and that's what what seems really cool about it is to talk to the manufacturers of hey, what's new, what's cool, what are you guys seeing, and then you know they're asking us the same question, uh, and that's the time when you know we really use it to work with those manufacturers and sit down with all of our suppliers and have meetings. So. I, if you see me at SEMA, I'm like running around looking at all the cool stuff and then sitting down for meetings and going through that and talking about what we're going to do in the next year with these people. So I would imagine that SD Wheel has some sway, some pull, some swagger. If you guys order a C container full of whatever the wheel is, like you can make or break some of the smaller brands and you could set the trend. Like, have you seen that happen where you order – a C container of whatever. Did you whatever, just like, ask if you've seen how he's re- been a tastemaker or ruins people's businesses? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wondering yes. if you were trying to get there. Because, like, I, I imagine that I'm a mom and pop wheel brand, and, I, and I'm calling up Sam going, please. Well, I, it wouldn't be Sam. I'm sure one of his, his counterparts. But you got to look at our wheels. We're the freshest stuff out there. It's American made and whatever their, whatever their song and dance is, right? And you're like, you know, we're not ready yet. He's like, blah, please. No, no. You know what it is? You it's shut the, him C- down it's and the like, SEMA booth, and SD Wheel walks out. And the sales guy of the manufacturer and like the president share a glance across the booth and the sales guy looks at the president and just shakes his head slowly back and forth and he's like, Sam said no. <laughs> <laughs> he got the thumbs down, oh no. That's right. <laughs> now I, I have to imagine that you, you guys uh, get to do a lot of really cool stuff and uh, and again, to Lightning's point, make or break some uh, well, no, I, well, hold some on. wheels. Well, make Sam answer. Do you make or break any, any brands? So uh, I will say what will happen is uh, sometimes when we say how much of something we want to order or what our, you know, our forecast is, sometimes you get to like the eyebrow of like, are you serious? Like there's a zero on there I'm not used to seeing. Like that's crazy. Um, but it's it's exciting to work with those companies. And the really cool thing is when someone like debuts a new wheel and we're really moving it a lot to, you know, get on the phone with them and be like, hey, this is really exciting. It's moving really well for us, moving really well for you. You got a, you know, a new hot wheel on here. Um, it's cool to see that into the market. 
That's awesome. I just wanted to go through the accessories one more time. If you go through the website, uh, you've got, you know, obviously suspension. We talked about that. But uh, performance products, engine performance, intake, driveline, brakes, exhaust, tuners, and gauges. You've got under aftermarket car and truck lighting, exterior lighting, off-road lighting, lighting accessories, um, do-it-yourself uh, LED strips and auxiliary lighting. You guys have exterior, you know, body accessories like armor and tonneaus and flares, bumpers, things like that. I mean, you guys offer all sorts of interior uh, uh, protection, mat storage. Uh, and then you also have things that you'd expect like wheel spacers and adapters, lug nuts, which are really important if your aftermarket wheel doesn't yep. use an OEM lug nut. Yeah. Is it conical it's, or it's is it right. tapered? Is it like yeah. I mean, there, there are, is it your wheel hub centric? Is it lug centric? That's going to change some stuff. So the fact that people don't always realize they need a new lug nut when they buy some aftermarket wheels, you guys have that covered. But then also you've got- They might car- need the spacer ring that, you know, to yeah. make it hub centric yep. because if you don't get the exactly yep. the right centering ring, you're going to you, have problems. Oh my God, you're going to be like not wobbling. Not good, yeah. 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 And then of course, uh, a lot of truck uh, cleaning products as well. So you guys have you know all the things that are going to make your wheels last, whether it's a, a tire shine and protection kit for painted, polished and chrome. Can we know, spend like about that. a half an hour talking about Morimoto LEDs? No, please. Why? Because I love Morimoto. <laughs> My favorite. No, because this is about SD wheel lighting. No, but they sell Morimoto. Well, let's oh yeah, Morimoto. We sell a lot of Dude, Morimoto. I'm, I'm telling you. So I found that brand a couple years back, and I was using like the, the the German brands that we're familiar with. They came OE on Earth, and I'm like, I don't really want to spend the money on 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 the German brands, the Bosch's or whatever they were. And I tried Morimoto. I'm like, these are freaking awesome, and they didn't burn out. They they were HIDs before there were LEDs, of course. And with bad um, HIDs, you'd get like a year and a half out of them. And they all of a sudden, they would just, you'd be driving down the street, just gone, right? Just out. And you'd have to change the ballast or the igniter or whatever. Morimoto's crush. That's all I'm saying. If you're looking for a set of Go to SDWheel.com. Yeah, or or HIDs, SDWheel.com. And and I also like that if you scroll down to the bottom to the boilerplate on SDWheel.com, talks about their story, but also gives an address. Not open to the public, but they actually have a physical address as well as customer service hours and sales hours, how to contact them. It's not like they're hiding behind the website like so many companies do. So, all right, well, if you guys are looking for uh, truck accessories, wheels, tires, suspension, on and on, you want to check out sdwheel.com. They're also on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all the places that uh, that you'd expect them to be. And again... Uh, oh, Sam, any, any bombs you can drop about SD? Anything that's coming up here soon? Like any debuts we should know about, be looking for? I will say um, with Archon, Anthem, and Anovia, we're always making new wheel designs because you know you got to push the envelope. You see the trends, like what are you going to capitalize on it? Um, we got some new wheel designs in the work from the from each of those brands. So kind of stay tuned. Um, we'll trickle those out for the probably next you know starting the fall um, through that time period. But we have some fun announcements for that. Uh, Anthem just launched. Uh, a new wheel called the Talon uh, that I am probably going to put on the Tacoma. And we actually have some different sizes coming on that in the uh, different colorways too. And don't forget, uh, they will mount and balance and ship wheels for free. So again, uh, for all your needs with wheels and tires, Truck Show Podcast uh, says, go see sdwheel.com. Dude, do you know, I bet Sam doesn't know that, uh, so after I got my HREs, I know this is like the 80th time I mentioned that brand. Uh-huh, hold on. So, <laughs> so a dude went to, he Googled, and he came across truckshowpodcast.com and he went to mm-hmm. our build page. Uh-huh. He saw the wheels and then he messaged me through Instagram. Said, where can I buy it? He didn't know about the podcast. Yep. He found the podcast. We got a new listener out of it. Then he he messaged me and he goes, we have the same truck. How do you like your wheels? I'm like, I love them. And he goes, where'd you get them? I said, SD Wheel. There you go. He bought them literally from SD Wheel. This is before we knew Sam. See? I'm just saying. Crazy. Love it. I'm just Appreciate saying. it. Definitely appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You're doing great work, Sam. Keep it up and congrats on the success. Yeah, we appreciate you carving out some time for us. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. We'll All right. Talk Thanks, soon. bud. All right. Take care, guys. See ya. So here's the million dollar question, Holman. Let's say you win the lottery. What wheels are you buying off SDWheel.com? Uh, I haven't decided, but I haven't narrowed down to about 50 different uh, styles. There, <laughs> okay, so. great. Welcome to the parts department. Screw, nut, filter, oil, grill, tools, wheels, tires, brakes, lights, gears, belts. And your wife warns you not to. Don't you spend our money. And then.
and you want to come back. Now, this is the parts department 2.0. It's, it's the, the new, all new parts department where we, we highlight. We actually tell you about parts? We actually tell you about parts. Rather than checking in with a single manufacturer, we find. It's like uh, the front of a magazine where there's a bunch of new products. That's ooh, what this part is. I like that. Okay. Right. What you got? Uh, so, uh, uh, announcement just went out this, uh, this past week where uh, Jeep Performance Parts has a new upgraded uh, two-inch lift kit from uh, Mopar for the Wrangler JL and Gladiator JT, and they have removed the previous supplier on such vehicle mm-hmm. and are replacing them with new Bilstein monotube shocks with remote reservoirs, and uh, it'll give you a better performance for larger wheels and tires. So it looks like uh, 5160s all the way around. They're the 46 millimeters. So the uh, the 5160s come with a remote reservoir for more oil capacity, better heat dissipation, and there's a uh, unique swivel banjo fitting that allows for a 360-degree rotation of the flex hose for direct fitment, and it also protects the reservoir oil line from uh, contact. And uh, the new bolt-on JPP lift kit is installed in all the stock mounting locations. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, the things that I have been hearing from the people I know who have tested this the difference from the old Mopar kit to the new Mopar kit by putting the Bilsteins on there, which are tuned specifically for that kit, mm-hmm. uh, is not... Um, it's massive? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say not insignificant, right. but I mean, it's 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 a lot. So uh, if you're looking for a uh, factory lift kit, uh, this is probably a pretty good one for, uh, for people to... Uh, check out. You can buy it from your dealer, and uh, they fit the Wrangler four door with the three six, the two liter, the Eco Diesel, or the uh, two point liter uh, E Torque. Uh, Wrangler two door with the three six or the two O Turbo, or the Jeep Gladiator with the three uh, six V six or the three liter Eco Diesel. So those are all the uh, applications it covers. When do we know? Now, now, go get it. Okay. All I can think about though, Holman, is the fact that I suck because Africa. Our buddy at uh, Bilstein yeah. that was here in the studio with yeah. us. And in fact, I'm going to be on their uh, podcast uh, later in the month. He emailed shock me talk. and said, um, Shock Talk is a cool, uh, that's a cool name. Yeah. He emailed me and said, hey, uh, can I get the hookup on some Banks parts? Okay. And I forgot to email him back. <laughs> Damn it. Wow. Damn well, it. Is, uh, Damn did it. You, do you have those parts that he's looking for? Yes, I do. Oh, well then. I'm going to hook him up. I love the guy. He's well, awesome. Then you're just but a... But I just forgot to reply. A lying Damn it. bastard who lies. What else do you have? Uh, okay, looking uh, at new products. You had sent me something earlier in the week about uh, EGR USA. Mm-hmm. And of course, you've got a uh, EGR um, tonneau cover on yours. So I have the roll track and I'm on yep. their mailing list because I actually... So I'm just throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. We are not shills. I'm telling you that if we don't like something, we don't talk about we it. We will not talk about it. There are a lot of brands we don't talk about. I just have to say this again. That roll track is the best tonneau cover I've ever owned. I've ever installed and I've ever owned. I'm just it's it is more expensive than most tonneau covers. It ain't cheap. But man, do you get what you pay for? Well, uh, that's nice for you Ram people, but uh, they just announced that that cover is now available for the Chevy 1500 and for a limited time they've got a 30% offer. And uh, they call it the world's smartest bed cover, unbeatable three-year warranty, uh, aluminum construction for security. There's a smaller canister that holds the roll, uh, the rolled top, in order to make more room in the bed. Uh, integrated central locking. There's onboard buttons, so you don't need a remote. Universal T rail, so you can mount accessories like uh, roof uh, bed rack bars and things like that. Uh, there's an open close anti pinch feature, and there's a smart ECU with variable speed control. And on top of that, OEM quality, and it is made right here in America. So if you're looking for a uh, high end, because it is, but probably the best tonneau you'll ever have. The fact that it's got four drains, one in each corner, with these amazing rubber fittings, it could be pouring, absolute pouring rain or snow. And almost no water is getting inside. And the shape of the the canister that Holman's talking about, it's created so that it drains to the corners. It doesn't pool up. If any leaves were get in, were to get in there, there's got access doors you can get into. Everything you could think of, like, I would fix that. I would fix that. No, they've already fixed it. All right. So head over to EGRUSA.com and you'll want to uh, check out the roll track. And it's uh, uh, really awesome. Uh, this is for the short box Chevys. So five, uh, nine. Uh, bed length. So uh, go over there and uh, check them out.
Can I guess the next uh, product? Um, yes, rock go. Jock. Rock Jock, Rock Jock, Rock, rock jock. jock. by John Only Curry. Only because I saw it on your Instagram. So basically, uh, back a long time ago, uh, when I worked for a different employer, uh, Brandon Curry from Rock Jock gave me a call and he said, hey, we've got this really cool new steering product for Wrangler JLs, and I'd love for you to, to put it on and, and test it for us and give us some feedback. And I was like, great. And then I got laid off. And so I didn't call him. I was like, well, he's not going to want anything to do with me. Uh, to his credit, he called me again. And he says, hey, when are we doing the uh, the steering kit on your JL? And I was like, oh, hey, I don't work for four-wheeler anymore. And I'm doing my own thing. He goes, yeah, yeah, I don't care about that. We just trust your input. And we'd like to have our product on your Jeep and Which get some feedback. you should have said, like, I also do the Truck Show podcast. We do a lot of Jeep knows. They, and They've I, been on the podcast and OVR, before. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, anyway, they, they, my, my point is that it wasn't like, oh, hey, do an article and we'll give you these parts. It was, hey, we have a relationship with you and we'd like you to test this really cool new product that we have. And so for me, it was kind of like- What um, does it do? Okay, I'm getting there. Okay, guys, you have room for one more product. Hurry it along. <laughs> he's All right. Already, he's already doing it. Keep keep going. So uh, so check this out. So they offer a high steer kit for uh, Wrangler JLs and Gladiator J- uh, JTs. And what's special about these kits- is you used to, like on a JK, you could get different knuckles or you could drill out your factory knuckles and then you would do a flip kit, which would move the uh, the drag link and the uh, the tie rod up higher on the axle so that it's more in line with the tube of the axle tube and not hanging below like a regular JL or JT does where your steering and your steering stabilizer are in harm's way. And so Curry developed this complete system Everything is 100% reversible, so you could return it to stock. Not sure why you'd want to, but it's a high steer kit. They got brand new forged knuckles, and they've got what they call a uh, organically forged uh, drag link. And what so, does that even mean, organically forged? So most companies that give you a beefier drag link, and it's shaped, it's just a tube, right? It's just a bent piece of whatever tubing that they put ends on, and they bolt it in place, and it's more rigid. What Curry did is it looks like a whale bone. They have made it look like kind of a... a it's a, kind of squashed? It's squashed, but like a boomerang or a whale bone. Mm-hmm. So what happens is that full compression, it nests with your tie rod. And so the drag link and tie rod nest together at full compression so they can both take up the same space. Because under a JL oh. or a JT, there's not a lot space of Space is precious. It's, right. it's very precious. So what they do is they take their knuckles, they raise the tie rod two and three quarters of an inch, and they raise the drag link two and a half inches. Well, in the case of my Jeep, I have a two and a half inch lift. And on that lift, all the geometry has been accounted for, whether it's the uh, the control arms. But what they don't do is adjust the steering. And so with all lift kits, a lot of times the steering stays stock and they just have a, a longer, uh, longer components or whatever, and they make it work. Well, this kit, moving it up, basically returns my Jeep to having stock geometry again. Okay. So going down the road, it's... Tracks way straighter. You know, Jeeps are are prone to wander They're a little squirrely. bit. So yeah, yeah. It tracks dead straight. Uh, we also put the Dana heavy duty ball joints on it, so we took out the plastic ball joints and went for the metal ball joints. And the steering for a solid axle vehicle on the highway on my Jeep right now is unbelievable. Tell me that these are coming for Ford and Ram. Uh, I have no idea if they're Can you find out? I, I, we, we, we need to have them back on the show is what yeah, we need to do. Yeah, it's about time. Uh, what I also did was I got their new adjustable uh, track bar, had that installed at the same time. The track bar is also organically forged. So when you put it on, you know, take out the shocks or put on the forklift and you put everything all compressed together, it all, again, it nests together. So there's no interference of things hitting when you go to full compression, mm-hmm. yet you have all the strength because these are forgings. And a lot of companies are like, hey, I'm a fab shop, and I just took this thicker wall metal, and I put this bigger drag Very link Very different than a forging. The engineering that has gone into this kit is unbelievable. The quality, the machining, uh, everything that you need to make this work, and the price is really reasonable. Can I guess? Sure. 1200 So all in. You're looking at about 375 retail for the uh, front track bar. Okay. And the full steering kit. Remember, with that steering kit. Yeah, full full, full system, 1200 But remember, Lightning, you get two cast iron knuckles. So he's machine. setting me. All right, so I need to say higher. 1800 You're getting a steering stabilizer relocation mm-hmm. bracket. Okay. You're getting a brand new heavy-duty drag link that's organically forged. I'm sticking with 1800 And, and a heavy-duty 
tie rod, mm -hmm. all that together, yes. and reversible. You're not drilling or tapering any of your things because you're using their new knuckles. Okay. Okay, I'm 1800 1868 retail. No way. And, and 374 for mm. the track bar. And let me tell you, the the amount of difference that this kit makes in steering, uh, handling, responsiveness, while still being dead straight going down the road, if you have a Jeep that's lifted two and a half inches or more and you're suffering from wandering steering, or if you've got an early JL or a, a non-392, non-Mojave uh, Gladiator, whatever, with the aluminum knuckles... You want these cast iron knuckles. Not only are you getting the strength, but you're getting the steering geometry to match your lift. So in addition to raising the tie rod two and three quarters of an inch, the draggling two and a half inches, they're moving the rods out of the way of rocks. They're restoring the factory geometry. They're giving you improved drivability and more road comfort and less fatigue because you're not sawing the wheel, making constant little corrections. The two knuckles also feature the adjustable steering stops for full lock-to-lock -lock adjustability. You can use the stock ball joints, the stock unit bearings, axles, brakes, dust shields. All of that is retained, although we chose to upgrade our ball joints while we had it all apart. Mm -hmm. And then they also have the what they call their correct link steering, which I think is hilarious because it's correct, spelled like curry, and link, uh, L-Y-N-C. Yep, yep. So it's it's uh, so it's kind of cutesy, but uh, but it works. I can't um, believe you just said cutesy. Yeah, well, it is. Well, you have a daughter, two daughters, yeah. I do have two daughters. Um, anyway, the steering that includes is the high articulation forged chromoly drag link. Um, and their tie rod is now a 42 millimeter, so one and five eighths inch diameter chromoly tube. All of the steering ends are forged steel and comparable in size to what's on a modern 110 truck. And you're putting that on your Jeep, on your Gladiator, on your Wrangler. And then the steering stabilizer um, mounts the shock up and behind the tie rod so nothing hangs below your axle tube. I mean, that's a lot of engineering to fit all that in there. And then put all these beefy parts as well. So if I'm going to go do the Rubicon, I don't have to worry about bending my right. tie rod driving off-road. Or blowing out my stock steering stabilizer. I need you to make a call and find out if they're uh, coming with other uh, straight axle vehicles. I, I know that they are working on JK next, but I don't know if they're doing uh, HD trucks, but I can find out. Yeah, please do. Great segment. It was only mostly awful. Let's get into Florida truck meat. Mostly awful? Come on. What kind no, of a no, no, no. He, can, he? he can't say great segment and then it was mostly awful. <laughs> That's wrong. Dude's fired. Mm. We don't pay him anything. All right. Well, he can stay then. All right. The next segment is going to take about three hours because there is so much friggin' truck news. I'm excited. Let's do it. What's, What's new, new in trucks? trucks? We need to know. What's new, new in trucks? We need to know. What's new, new in trucks? We need to know. Lifted, lowered, and everything in between. What's happening in the world of trucks? Ah! That was great. That was, did so you, good. Uh, that was so good. Did you see Toyota tried to blow up the internet this week? Yep. They I were on was every there. one of my feeds. They do. They were in LA Times, Wall Street Journal, Newsweek, everything. Everywhere, every Instagram feed, every Facebook feed, TikTok. It was crazy. They were on threads. Nobody's on threads. <laughs> I knew that would piss you off. Uh, it doesn't piss me off. It's yeah. just it's, I think no, it's funny nobody's there. Everyone signed up for threads and then just didn't use it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so the 2024 Land Cruiser. Uh, 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 uh. Did I hear? No, clearly you did. You're just talking about it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the uh, 2024 uh, Toyota Land Cruiser is back, sort of. Mm-hmm. I, I I struggle with this one. Now I was, you you flew somewhere and you drove something, didn't you? Or you just sat in it? No, or no, you no. Looked no. At it's, it? it's just the it was just the first look. So okay. it's it's it was kind of like uh, you know fly into uh, Salt Lake City and we all got to hang out at the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum. And if you have never been there and you're in Salt Lake City, make that the one place you go. Why is it, it based is in Salt Lake City? Amazing. Be Why I used to be at Miller Motorsports Park, I think, and they they just moved downtown. A phenomenal building and. Uh, countless Land Cruisers of uh, Japanese and American origin, every shape, modification, uh, uh, wear level. I mean, there's a bunch of rusty. There's one that caught on fire. It's just sitting there. It's like, well, this one burned down, and here's the Hulk. <laughs> and you're like, that's awesome. Like, the headlight glass is all melted in it, and it's all rusty wow, and oxidized. interesting that that it's, would be on display. Oh, so awesome. The whole, okay. the whole place is amazing. And and to have the Land Cruiser be unveiled in a setting like that was, was phenomenal. So... Kudos to those guys for uh, for hosting it, for Toyota, for for making it go there. But 
You Here's know what it's like? It's, it's like? it's like when McDonald's drops the McRib and they're like, the McRib is back. It's like, you can't ignore it. No matter no. where you are, you, have you cannot avoid a McRib advertisement. Billboard, radio, TV, internet, it's everywhere. That was Land Cruiser. Dude, Land Cruiser. Dude, their, er, their earned media must have been off the chart yesterday. Uh, I think companies would pray to have one day like that. And um, So here's the thing. I'm kind of torn. I thought, because it is based on the TNGA-F platform, which is the new global body on frame platform. It's, it underpins everything from the Land Cruiser 300 series and Lexus version, the LX600, that's, on the, that's a 310, to Sequoia, Tacoma, Tundra, mm -hmm. uh, GX550. So I thought, okay, so you've got the GX550, which we talked about as kind of being like a Land Cruiser, like, you know, an homage to the Land Cruiser 80 series, and that was, it was so cool. And I'm thinking, okay, it's it's got uh, all wheel drive and a, a rear locker available. Then what and, do you not like about it? Because I can it's, it's obvious that there's some issue. Okay, I'm getting there. Lightning, are you ready? Yeah. How about now? Go. Uh, how about now? I'm I've been ready. I, all what, right. What well, I'm trying. Of, what kind of what kind of Listen, uh, shade I'm, are you gonna throw I'm, at the new Land Cruiser? I'm trying to I'm trying to get there. I'm setting the stage. So the GX550 I thought was really impressive for being a Lexus product. They had the new Overtrail and Overtrail Plus editions that add a lot of off-road equipment. To me, a Land Cruiser should be the ultimate in off-roading in Toyota's lineup. So I thought for sure they're not bringing the big Land Cruiser back as a Toyota. If you want to buy that vehicle, it's a Lexus LX600. That's that's done and whatever. So they're bringing back the Land Cruiser Prado which is the smaller Land Cruiser sold overseas as the Prado, but they're not calling it the Prado here. They're calling it the Land Cruiser. So if it's taking the place of the full-size big Land Cruiser and it's going to be in Toyota's lineup and there's already a GX that's luxurious, then you have to add some capability. So I'm thinking you're going to keep the V6, you're going to add a front locker, and you're going to make it a premium Toyota. That leaves 4Runner a place to slot in. What we got was Toyota going, hey, we got two grades of Land Cruiser. Well, three because there's a first edition. We've got the 1958 edition or the Land Cruiser edition. One has round heritage headlights. One has a more modern, uh, like, 60s series sort of nod rectangular headlights. All of them have the 2.4 liter turbo four hybrid. No third row, no front locker, although they do have electronically uh, disconnecting stabilizer bar. So that's fine. And the tires are pretty small. It's like a, the biggest tire you can get is like a 32.6 or something like that. Okay. It's fine. The interior is really good. The package I really like. The wheel wells are big. They're going to lend themselves. Good looking rig. It's cool. Yeah. But where does that leave Forerunner? Because I thought if Land Cruiser is premium, then Forerunner is going to come in. It's going to have the hybrid 2.4 liter because it'll be closer right. to the Tacoma. Yes. It'll have maybe the two rows. And if you want to step up to a third row, you get a Land Cruiser. So that's not the case. And... The TRD Pro will have the rear locker, so I'm thinking about Forerunner's kind of asked out because really Land Cruiser is sort of where Forerunner, the high end of Forerunner, sits right now. So how are you going to differentiate Forerunner and Land Cruiser? Because clearly Toyota is saying if you want a three row, we're pushing you to the Sequoia. So now are you going to have two two row SUVs with the same engine on the same platform yes. with the same specs? Yes, one will be very expensive. That's the bottom no, line. But what that's, mean, that's no. the problem. The Land Cruiser is the premium one. So Forerunner has to be less than Land Cruiser. Right. And Land Cruiser is not very expensive. It starts in the mid-50s, which is we, right where Forerunner sits now. We know that now. for sure. Yes, that's what the press release said. Mm. So my point is it's sitting squarely on top of Forerunner right now. So what's the next Forerunner going to be? Is it going to be a three-row like a couple generations ago, and then you'll be able to do that? Is it going to be a more retro, wild-inspired? Is it going to be more mainstream? Because it is coming back. Toyota said, Forerunner means a lot in North America. We're not walking away from it. So I'm just really confused because I want to love the Land Cruiser and I just so like the Land Cruiser. Here's the thing. Toyota, they're smarter than we are. I'm sure they and are. And I can guarantee you that there's some kind of a Venn diagram that shows where all of the Toyota product fits together. I, I get it. And that has not been shared with the media. So everybody's asking. And the Land Cruiser only has running ground clearance of 8.3 inches. Is and and ground clearance eight points. So that's really low. Yeah, because it doesn't have big tires. Oh. Um, the departure, breakover, approach angles—they're okay, but they're not great. It doesn't. It feels like a Land Cruiser in looks, and we all know at least the pure but not in capability. Product, but I don't. I'm not saying it's not capable. I don't want to go there. But there's a lot of vehicles in the same size class that you can now get with a lot bigger tire and a front locker. And if you're competing against 
Bronco and you're competing against Wrangler and you're kind of playing in that field, there's other choices. Especially if Land Cruiser could have been the three row to separate itself away from Bronco and Wrangler, but it's still only a two row. Is the three row thing really that important? To a family, it is. Okay, fair enough. To a family, it is. So anyway, it'll tow 6,000 pounds. It has 326 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque combined. Uh, it's got the 112.2 classic uh, Land Rover wheelbase. So they're, yeah. they're really banking on the hybrid thing, aren't they? Well, everybody has to. That's that's not... You're either going all electric or going hybrid. Although we've started to see is a lot... Is that because of, of cafe or is yeah, it... Ju- okay. Yeah, in government regulations. We're starting yeah. to see now, though, a lot of manufacturers are backing off the EV and going, hey, uh, hybrids are... We're, we're getting into hybrid. And if you think about it, We've talked about it before. Hybrid makes a lot of sense because those minerals, if you look at like the reports coming up for the supply chain to make battery packs, those rare earth minerals and a lot of the stuff made are going to be constrained. So would you rather have smaller amount of EVs that have full battery only, or would you like to spread all those minerals around on a smaller battery pack with multiple hybrids? That's the move. And hybrid, again, you can charge up if you want to. You can go on gas if you want to. You're not constrained by the infrastructure because you can go either way. And to me, it's the the more natural progression of where we should be going. Not we're not ready to jump all the way into. Yeah, either. finally, it, it took the last couple of years people to really, really scream about the mineral resources, and it's finally getting through to the people who just want to pretend like it's not a thing. I don't know like, if it like, is. I don't think that's true. I think it's getting through to the consumer, but I don't think the regulators care. Hmm. I think that they're going full speed towards something that they think is the right answer. And the consumers are smarter well, than those than regulators. Cause, cause, well, well, have, you been read, have you been reading the automotive news and the reports coming out yes. that there's more supply of EV than there are buyers now? And we haven't even gotten to Ford's talking about making, what, 300,000 EVs in the next couple of years or something. They're starting to stack up with those with uh, Mach-E's and they're having a hard time selling those. And they want to make a, you know, a, a, a ton of F-150 Lightnings. And the buyers who bought those vehicles are there. They bought them. They're like, oh, early adopter, I want in. Great truck for how I use it. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. The mainstream buyer is kind of standing back going, mm, not I'm, ready yet. I'm not ready. Yeah. I'm not ready, especially when I was having a conversation with somebody. When you look at EV range and, and the manufacturer says, well, we have a 300-mile range. Well, the reality is, is in a gas fuel tank, and I've said this before, you live between 0% and 100%. You can get 0% fuel, and then you can fill it up to 100%. Then you work down to zero, and you fill it up. In a battery, in an electric vehicle, you really live between 20% and 80%. That means 40% of your range... Can't use. You, 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 well, I won't say can't use. You won't. But you won't use on a regular basis. Right. And may, maybe I'll even dial that back. So let's say you you never go below 20, and then you fast charge the 80, and you plug it in overnight, so you start at 100. So let's say that's 20% of your range immediately that you're not going to use. Now add climate control. Now add, you know, you know, air conditioning, heating. Now add external temperature. You forgot about my airbag system, and so now, I can lower it. Well, and now you're t- now you're <laughs> talking about you know uh, weather, mm-hmm. wind. Uh, if you plan on towing, you forgot about hauling, my JL sub box. All that stuff. So anyway, uh, there's a lot of people need to learn about what is right for them. And I like EVs. I think EVs are great for the right purpose. And so anyway, um, I don't know. I think Land Cruiser being hybrid is cool. I just thought it was going to be the V6 and not the four cylinder because I thought four cylinder go to forerunner to put more differentiation in there. I was obviously wrong on that, and I don't know what Toyota is going to do. And I'm really curious to see where they go with forerunner because it's supposed to be out next year. So we'll see. Hmm. Anyway, love the interior on the Land Cruiser. One of the things I'll say the base model, the 1958 trim, has the most wonderfully done take on the old Land Cruiser twill seats. Really? Their cloth seats are a modern version of that twill. Is it real it's, twill? It's like twill. Okay. It's just right. It's just proper. If you've been in an old Toyota Land Cruiser, and you're like, oh, those twill seats. I remember that. The new ones, cloth seats are like, then it's not just like a seat cover that is just like mouse fur. It's like a twill seat. And it's like, that's cool. So, like you can feel it. It has the, it, the proper yeah, texture. You can see the way, the, the, you can the see weaves. The weaves and everything. Yeah, wow. No, it's super cool. Okay. A uh, huge cargo area. Um, Dash is great. It's a mix of, uh, I'd say, Wrangler, and you can see a little bit of G-Wagon in there. Um, How much Toyota. emblemization is happening on the dashboard? Uh, not as obnoxious as like a Tundra. Okay. You know, where it's like, Toyota bro! You know, it's not it's not like that at all, which is which is a good thing. And then you can also get a big old 12.3-inch uh, screen on there, and there's a bunch of uh, different, um, you know, front stabilizer bar, disconnect now. 
uh, rigid LED fog lights come on the, the Land Cruiser upmarket version. They now add multi-terrain select and crawl control. Uh, and then you also have multi-terrain monitor, which is your cameras on that big high-resolution screen. So there's a lot of cool things going for it. I just thought it would be a little bit, I'm not going to say better because I haven't driven it, a little bit more. Fair enough. Lighting, have you heard? No, wait. Nope. What do you know about Sinister Diesel? Those are the guys that tried to trademark blue, the color blue. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, and, everyone laughed at them, and they're like, bro, you can't have blue. You and, can't trademark a color. No, they're trademarking the color red. Because they're bleeding? Oh, I, I mean, I don't know if they're bleeding. I'm not going to say that, I'm, uh, but uh, they have a big old fine to pay. Really? Were they uh, accused of polluting? Nope. nope. They no. were uh, not accused of it. They settled. Oh, for the tune of $1 million. So they're paying Uncle Sam a million dollars for what, uh, for selling delete devices? Well, so there was a press release on justice.gov, which is the Office of Public Affairs for the U.S. Department of Justice. And there were some pretty interesting tidbits I pulled out of here. So the press release is California truck parts manufacturer Sinister Diesel agrees to pay $1 million after pleading guilty to conspiracy and for manufacturing and selling illegal defeat devices. It goes on to say that the parts manufacturer, Sinister Manufacturing Company, DBA, Sinister Diesel, uh, pled guilty. The company agreed to implement a compliance program and not manufacture, sell, or install any device that defeats a vehicle's emission controls. This is where it gets interesting. Sinister Diesel uh, pleaded guilty to a two-count information, charging it with conspiracy to violate the Clean Air Act and defraud the United States, and with violating the CAA by tampering with the monitoring device of an emissions control system of a diesel truck, under the plea agreement, the defendant agrees to pay a 500000 criminal fine. Sinister must also pay an additional 500000 under the civil consent decree, which the United States filed simultaneously with a civil complaint against Sinister alleging violations of the CAA's pro prohibition against the sale or manufacture of devices that bypass, defeat, or render inoperative emission controls. The civil consent decree prohibits the company from making, selling, or offering to sell defeat products, including delete tunes, and prevent Sinister Diesel from transferring intellectual property that would allow others to make such products. To ensure compliance, they have to Im implement a robust internal training program, notify its distributors and former customers about the settlement. Here's where it gets really interesting. They go on to say, for close to 10 years, Sinister Diesel sold parts designed to override or disable the emissions control systems uh, on a truck. And this was from the uh, Principal Deputy Assistant Administrator Larry Starfield from the Environmental Protection Agency Office of the, Starfield. Of the Enforcement and Compliance <laughs> Assurance. Anyway, so he goes on to say, you know, miss 100 times more, blah, 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 blah. They're going to aggressively, you know, prosecute. But this is the thing that, that I was a, a little bit blown away. So they say from 2010 to 2020, they sold parts intended to be installed in motor vehicles, right? Uh, diesel trucks enabling the defeat and all that, yep. emissions control, yep, blah, blah, yep, blah. Yep. We know what those are. But they also said the deleted tunes were software produced by another company which could alter a diesel truck's onboard computer to allow a truck with its emission controls deleted to appear to run normally. So I don't know if that's where the conspiracy comes in as they were working with others or I'm not I'm not sure how that works. But uh, basically, there's uh, they don't name the other company because I think it's anybody out there, but they allowed a gateway for people to do that, which we talked to Corey about, you know, the industry and right. all that. But this is, this is the place where uh, I was like, Whoa. So in there, they, they even note in the press release, Sinister sometimes labels delete product for quote unquote racing and included mm. disclaimers off -road. in marketing materials indicating that its product should be used only in off-road settings. The company knew most of its delete products were being purchased by diesel truck drivers who use those products on public roads, not racetracks. So just because you say off-road use only does not matter, does not absolve you no, no, of no. liability. The, the, here's the thing though. There is no such thing as off-road use. No, literally, there's not. There's no such thing. You can say those words. Yeah, it doesn't but, but mean you anything. Can't regardless of the vehicle, you can't touch the emission system. Correct. And we keep telling you guys this. You're like, ah, no, it's no big deal. Off-road <laughs> use. I drive it in Mexico, right. so yeah, no, you okay. don't. They know it. Yeah, and they know yeah. it. Said at times, approximately 25 percent of Sister's gross revenue stem from its delete products. Ooh. This is the thing that blew my mind. According to Sinister's own statistics, between October 30th, 2015, and July 17th, 2017. 2015 to 2017, not two full years. 
It sold 39,792 defeat devices, including at least 35,960 kits. Wow. This is in the press release from the government. Wow. So you think they don't know? They know They know exactly. They know. So, dude, there's another juicy. So I know about this story. Yeah. There's another juicy tidbit in there. Yeah. Read the part about the phone calls. Through its employees, Sinister Diesel reached, and this is all in quotes, reached agreements with other companies that manufacture tuners or tuning platforms to sell their product bundled together. Sinister would then often advise customers on the other needed parts for their deleted vehicles to run properly with Sinister's delete kits, such as a tuner or tuning platform and delete tunes, and sell them those products too. They counseled customers on how to evade state emission tests. So they didn't do it online. They did it over the phone thinking nobody would ever hear them. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dude, I'm uh, telling you, they they know. It's it's only going to get worse. And uh, part of this is why we don't have light-duty diesels anymore, you know? The, the three liter uh, GM straight six is the last one. It was nuts. Uh, Remember when I went to the um, Diesel World, your former competitor, Diesel World magazine had an event at the Sacramento Raceway. Uh-huh. So in our state's capital, uh-huh. and I would say that 90% of those trucks were deleted and all rolling coal on this quarter mile drag strip. It was mental. I was like, how is there no one from CARB here just, oh, they were there. just writing down license plates? It's crazy. Listen, I know it, to you guys, the listener, it sounds like I want to bust people. Dude, I don't. Homa doesn't. I just, it's, they're don't playing, shoot the messenger. Dude, they're we, playing dirty. Our job they're, is They're going to bust your ass yeah. and it's going to suck. Now, did you see that Sinister got popped in 2015 by CARB? Yeah. So this, so yeah. this I think, is why it's, why it's civil. They're like... Dude, you yeah, already like yeah. we we got you in 2015, and here you've been doing it this whole time, dude. It's 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 nuts out there. Like like they know, they know. I think this is all payback for trying to uh, trademark the color blue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the case. Hey, lighting, did you hear? No. Nope. Uh, fans of the uh, Jurassic Park uh, film franchise uh, are excited because it's celebrating its 30th anniversary in 2023. So Jeep is getting on uh, board. By working with our friend uh, Matt over at Jeep Graphics Studio, and they have new graphic kits. Basically, two versions of this package available, but production is limited to 100 units, numbered zero to 99. It's basically the Jurassic Park uh, package for a Jeep Wrangler. The first package costs 550 bucks, includes two logo door graphics, a numbered center hood graphics, side hood graphics, a numbered swing gate handle graphic, two numbered fender vent gra- uh, graphics, and a numbered shifter insert with a Tyrannosaurus Rex on it. The second one is uh, 650 and offers everything in the first, but you also get a uh, Grassy Island Transfer Case Shift insert. Uh, the two packs are available for uh, Wrangler, Wrangler 4xE, and Gladiator. Um, and, of course, the swing gate uh, graphics aren't available for the pickup, uh, but you can head over to uh, Jeep Graphics Studio and uh, get yourself a, uh, a 30th anniversary graphic kit for your Wrangler JL to match the uh, the vehicle seen in Jurassic Park. I wouldn't do it, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, I can imagine there's 100 that. people out there who yeah, would. absolutely. Hey, speaking of graphics, yep. what's your opinion on owning a Ram 1500 Rebel and then putting stickers on the bedsides that say Rebel TRX? No. Rebel TRX was a concept that was post-Rebel and pre-TRX, and they changed it to TRX with no Rebel on it. There's a guy out, a uh, couple of them, yep. on the on the, on the the old Facebook, yep. on the groups, yep. spotted at gas stations with the Rebel TRX, and guys are like, uh, that's that's not cool. And there are others like, just let him be him. He's fine. Why do you care what he puts on his... You know why? Because I don't like the guys that buy an AMG badge on eBay mm. and think that they can slap it on their car. You can't. And be an AMG. Jerk. Or an M series on their BMW. Or whatever. That's just don't be a turd, dude. <laughs> don't, Stop it. Don't be a turd, dude. Is yeah. that that's a hold on, I'm writing that down as t shirt. Mm-hmm. Don't be a turd, dude. Mm-hmm. All right, got it. Hey lighting, did you hear? No. Nope. Uh Ford's recalling eight hundred and seventy thousand F one fifty trucks. Oh. That could have an electric parking brake issue. Uh, it's 21 to 23 models. Ouch. So it's basically uh, all of the F-150 trucks with a single outlet exhaust system. Uh, so if you're uh, one of the owners of a 14th generation F-150, uh, there's a potential wiring issue. Uh, and according to the automaker and the National Highway and Traffic and Safety Administration, the affected vehicles, the rear axle wiring harness bundle may contact the housing. So... Um, no, I don't think it's that bad, but no. if the harness oh, wiring rubs... <laughs> Through, uh, it could apply the parking brake while driving if there's a short circuit. 
I <laughs> I still just like regular uh-huh. old parking brakes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you push with your foot or pull up with your hand. Um, apparently there were something like 918 warranty claims, three field reports for the wire chafing. Uh, of those, 299 indicated that the parking brake had inadver- uh, inadvertently activated. Uh, 19 alleges the parking brake activated while driving. Yeah. So Ford yeah. says it's not aware of any, but they're going to go and fix that for you. Yeah, so that's not good. FYI. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No! No, I didn't hear. Nissan has announced that the uh, 2024 Nissan Titan gets a, a new package and a few changes. The most notable is that Nissan's dropping the base S trim, which means that the entry-level Titan is now the SV, which means more value, more uh, more features. However, it starts at 47665 so it won't be the value that it was before if you're looking at a base model truck. But Yeah, but it's still a value. But if you're looking at a mid-grade, it's, it's still good. But... Uh, so the Titan from SV on up through Pro 4X, Platinum Reserve, uh, all that good stuff uh, continues on. Rear wheel drive is only available on the SV or Platinum Reserve. The King Cab option is only available with the Titan SV 4x4, which is uh, starts at 51035. But we're, there's one notable option for this year. It's the SV Bronze Edition package. So it's a $2,980 option. Bronze. Brings 20-inch bronze wheels, a glass black grill surround and bumper trim. Titan branded sport bar and bronze edition floor mats. Otherwise, all the trims, including the Pro 4X and Platinum Reserve, are the uh, same equipment that they had in 2023. Have so. you seen the bronze? Because that could be cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. Here's a picture of it right here. Let me see. Oh, that's good luck. Yeah, I like those that's, wheels and bronze. That's a good they, look. They look yeah, good. nice. Nice looking truck. And of course, as you guys know, uh, Nissan has the most standard power of any half ton. The sole 5.6 liter gas V8 puts out 400 horsepower and 413 pound feet of torque. Hey, Lighting, did you hear? What? No. No, I don't think so. Did I? Uh, you might want to run over to uh, my old friends at Motor Trend who had this. Tell them how to run a website because, man, do they have a lot of ads. God. Uh, no kidding. Dang, I was looking at an old bank story today, yep. and I just couldn't get through the myriad of ads. Okay, that's not what I was going to talk about, oh, but okay. uh, they decided to purposefully run a Rivian R1T completely empty. Just to see what would happen, and it had a uh, well. It would run completely empty, uh, and had a cascading uh, problem. So first of all, they tried to run it until it was completely dead, and basically, um, there's so much like reserve, it just keeps flashing warnings, going, "Oh, it's the end is near." <laughs> the end is near. No, it's really good. It's getting closer now. You can only go the speed now. Armageddon is just yeah. a day away. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. So uh, they say that the 135-kilowatt battery pack that they had was officially good for 314 miles of range. What did they get out of it? But unofficially uh, creeps up to 328 with, with a recent over-the-air update. So this was on their guinea pig uh, 22 Rivian R1T. The uh, story was written by uh, my friend Scott Evans, and he says... Uh, <laughs> it's just it's, it's kind of comedy when you're reading it because you're like, man, that's a bad day. Like He knew... It was going to be a bad day because he woke up in the morning and goes, I'm going to do a story about running a pickup truck, you know, Rivian EV pickup truck to empty. And he got way more than he bargained for. He says, for the purpose of this test, um, a more recent over-the-air update gave us the ability to set the charging limit as low as 50% to keep the uh, keeping the battery drained before the big day. So he didn't want to have it charged at 100, right? He, he started with it at, at 50. So the idea was they're going to they're going to run it out of charge, right? So he was in the Santa Clarita River Valley north of L.A., and there's only a pair of slow level two wall chargers available for EV drivers and no level three DC fast chargers for 25 miles in any direction. So they wore out the battery. They called Rivian roadside assistance to see what would happen. They wanted to know where they would tow us, how much would it cost, all that kind of stuff. So he puts in the story, it, it sounds easy, but it's harder than you think because it doesn't want you to run out of battery. And when we did the Transamerica Trail with them and drove the Rivians cross country, I Does it actually I was in, steer you toward a uh, no, to I, what, a fill-up station? I was in a negative a charging station. I was in a negative mileage state as all the lights from stuff were going on. We're like 7 miles away from camp or like everything, you know, it's like conserving power and the AC shuts off. It's 95 outside and so I I totally get all that. Uh, but he talked about warnings on the screen, audio warnings, suggested navigation routes for the nearest charger, reroutes. Uh, it wants you to make it to the power knock at strand. So that's good. It has all these built-in things to go, idiot, this way, right? So he said the first uh, warnings popped up. Anyway, long story short, they got down to zero in a neighborhood uh, in Fillmore. Uh, they could accelerate slowly, but the truck would top out at 26 miles per hour. So they kept driving like that. And so on a slight rise, they ran out of uh, speed and they're becoming a hazard and a bright red warning pops up. It's Anyway, all that stuff. 
Still didn't quit. Traveled more. Um, it, <laughs> wow! Just on and a Rivian that won't die. Right. So finally, he said uh, they would have. You know, the average person would have found a safe spot to pull over before they did. Um, did but they it, have a chase it, car? It didn't just quit suddenly. I don't know. So finally, the truck stops. They push the SOS button. They summon help. And wait, so it still got enough juice to fire the SOS? Well, but here's what's funny. So they contacted Rivian roadside assistance. And uh, they dispatched a tow truck. So what they what they found out was once it's completely dead and out of power, you can't release the electronic parking brake. Wait, why? So the tow truck had to jack up the Rivian to get it on the tow truck because there's no power. There's, the button doesn't right. work anymore. You're out of power, and you have just they just yeah, wow. Just, that's all it. these all sorts of things. Do the doors work? Can you open the doors? So he said that the how tr- do you roll the windows down or op- so he said the truck's completely dead, right? And so he decided that the jumper cables were missing from the recovery kit, so there's no way to jump the 12-volt batteries. So then they had their support vehicle, they did have one, had a 110-volt outlet in the back. So they're like, well, maybe we'll you know, try and plug it into that to release the parking brake. That didn't happen. They also couldn't open the charge port door. So unable to access the, motors ma- the owner's manual on the infotainment screen, they had to go to the internet to figure out where the manual release was. They found out that the manual release cables from when the truck won't release a charging cable, not the charging port door. Oh, my God. So it's just this comedy of errors. Um, it goes on and on. It goes down through help arrives. They had char- trouble charging. They got it to the Rivian. The, the whole thing is is a really interesting read. So anyway, go go to Motor Trend and the, uh, the story. So grin and bear the ads and yeah. read through the story. Yeah, and it's entitled, What Happens When a Rivian EV Runs Out of Battery Charge? And it's it's... Not what you think it is. You think, oh, okay, they it ran out and they drove it somewhere, they charged it, and they went on their way. It becomes no. just a rock, right? Just a big, a big door- paperweight. It just becomes a giant immovable object. I think at the end they basically said, listen, it's avoidable. The truck did everything it could to warn us. Don't do this if you're even for fun. It's not fun. <laughs> even if you're a magazine guy writing a story. So anyway. All right. And our last story, uh, Lightning, did you hear? No. 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 No, I don't think so. Toyota is considering a Corolla-based small pickup to rival the Maverick, according to uh, internet reports, which mm. uh, some of the renderings were god-awful. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like don't, It looked like a, uh, a, Corolla, a RAV4 with a bed. A or Corolla, Corolla truck is what you're saying? A Corolla Crossboard or whatever that one is, the mm. adventure one with a bed on Corolla the bed. truck yeah, just, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not on board. No. Does Toyota I think, need that? I think Maverick just, it, it was the right truck at the right time for what it was trying to be, and you just have to be okay with that. You you don't need more. No, I don't think. No, you got the Kia, whatever it is. No, the Hyundai Santa, the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So oh, there's there's two. That's all you need, guys. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Seriously. Do you even need those two? I mean, just barely. Well, your kids do maybe. Let's move it along, guys. You're going on and on about nothing. Let's try reading some email. <laughs> okay. Jeez. <laughs> oh, God. That's needy. Yeah. Pushy too. You eat. All right, before we even launch into this, I gotta I gotta be honest with you guys. I've I've fallen behind on the Nissan, the oh, Frontier spotting. It's, it's worse than you think. Is it really? I have twenty that have been printed out oh, that we haven't even done. Uh, uh, I have eleven in my backpack. You, you have eleven? I have eleven in my backpack. You right said eleven. Yeah, I know. I know All right, let's. let's just, it's painful. People are tired of the show. Let's uh, let's move it along. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's okay. Like a producer. What was his name? Marvin. Uh, his Elliot. Name was, no, no. It's Ethan. Uh, Miles. Miles. Okay, Miles. Got it. Miles. Yes. Miles. Uh, the Shaft Show. The Shaft Show. So Trevor writes. Uh, can't wait to hear the next episode of the Drive Shaft Talk. Riveting talk, guys. Riveting. <laughs> it must be about your uh, warranty on your TRX. Did you get it fixed? No clunk right now. Okay. What did no they do? clunk. They applied the lube to the splines. Applied. That's what she said. That's they exactly what they did. They uh, packed it full of grease. So you're going to say that the problem was the stiction in the drive shaft, and not something else that you're trying to explain to me on the air. Yeah. Well, it's gone. It's gone, and whatever it was, it's gone. But it's going to come back. It's going to come back in a few thousand miles because everyone says it comes back. All right. Well, enjoy while it lasts. Uh, Jake Prius says, hey, fellers, got your uh, letter in the mail with a couple of stickers and just wanted to thank you and share with you that one will be slapped on my truck soon. I plan to give the extra one to my friend who's also a listener of the show. Got a kick out of the name on the letter. LOL. Jake Prius. 
I better share my last name now and try to clear my last name. Ha <laughs> ha. Thanks. Palmgren. So there you go. Palmgren. I like Jake Prius better. Are you just naming listeners who don't give you last name now? Yep. <laughs> All right. And this is actually Trevor, but a <laughs> different Trevor. What's up, Trevor? Uh, so he's asking about uh, catch cans, it looks like. So Mr. Catch Can Lightning, what do you think of this Mishimoto design? I'm in California, so it seems like the best for functionality and retaining the factory pieces as kind of a secondary design. So to my knowledge, and I haven't looked into this Mishimoto catch can, but to my knowledge, there are no 50-state compliant catch cans. I would not touch that with... Uh... So first off, I'm not a Mishimoto fan. Because I'm a competitor to them. I work for a competitor. Uh, if you want a catch can, I advise you to look at Billet Technology. That's what I'm running illegally. Whoa, and, whoa, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said uh, that out loud. Why would you say that out loud? I don't know. I, just, I, would that, you I think I know. Just say that's what you have uh, run in the past. In the past, I've run a catch can on vehicles I don't own anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Okay. Billet technology. All right. I got one from our buddy Lars says, hey, fellas, I'm wondering if Bill Stein has shocks for big rigs. Their website's difficult to navigate. I can't find anything about that. Lars Dweck. Uh, Lars, no. Uh, Bill Stein makes a lot of shocks. They do not have one for or applications for semi-trucks. I'm sorry to break the news on that. Boo. This one's from uh, Justin. Hey, gents. I don't think Bropar is all that bad. Well, it's too late. I'm not running those plates. Pretty funny, actually. Too bad others seem to think it's just a California pompous thing. However, maybe have both ideas in a way. Window decal, bro par, or no car. Could be a fun spin on it. My two cents. Uh, no, Justin, bro par is dead. The license plate is going to be hung above the steer horns in the pod shed. So, but thanks for the uh, support. A little delayed. So, uh, 19 to 3. Yep, I lost. All right, I got one from Ronnie Kuntz. Says, hey guys, I've been listening since the beginning. I always try to patronize your sponsors. I've switched to Bill Stein shocks on my personal vehicles and the ones I replace at work because of the episodes with their representatives. Thank you very much. Uh, just ordered $60 worth of Hot Shot Secret Fuel Additives. Thank you very much. It have been subscribed to the print version of OVR since magazine number two. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Uh, I love uh, the excellent how-to articles <clears throat> by Sean P. Mm-hmm. Uh, best I've seen, I was a print four-wheeler subscriber for decades. Well, Ronnie, thank you very much for uh, following me over to uh, OVR from Four Wheeler. I hope we're living up to your uh, to your expectations. <laughs> Issue four should be oh, in OVR. your mail. Yeah, you, not, you, not, they, podcast. Yeah, not podcast. Not uh, podcast. Yeah. Issue four uh, went out uh, last week, so uh, you guys should be getting it now if you haven't gotten it already. We're really proud out of that and uh, if you want to subscribe uh ovrmag.com you can get uh print or digital of course uh my recommendation is print comes uh every two months so six times a year it's a really beautiful magazine working on issue number five right now so uh if you have any questions you can always hit me up at holman at truckshowpodcast.com and uh yeah thanks for all the support through our sponsors and our side projects truckshowpodcast at gmail.com or lightning at truckshowpodcast.com send us a letter and we'll read it the truck show the truck show the truck show oh, oh. and you can find that guy across the table from me at lbc lightning on the gram i'm at sean p holman or at truck show podcast you can email us truckshowpodcast at gmail.com and please leave us a message on the five star hotline. You guys have been slacking lately. Even if you're bored, driving cross country, towing a boat, I don't care. You're uh, delivering flour. Sh- delivering flour. Uh, or you're just. Wait, don't we have a guy that delivers flour? Uh, or is it sugar? What does he I deliver? Remember. Flour, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or if you're just out for a cruise or taking your kids to school, whatever. Uh, five. What if we found out that he was actually like a drug smuggler? It wasn't flour at all. It's like. You know what I'm saying? It's like nose candy. 657-205-6105. I don't know what you're saying. Okay. At all. Gotcha. All right. And uh, keep those Know Your Notes coming. We're starting to compile a nice little uh, pile of Know Your Notes. Oh, I got a couple for you, dude. All right. I collected a few at the uh, the Banks event. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, you're never going to guess them. I probably won't. No, and that's, that's part of the fun. So with the, the deal, if you you're just new- like when I don't know anything, sometimes it's yeah, rare. Usually, you know a lot. So uh, if you haven't heard, know I know your a note, little bit about a lot. It's been I don't know 20, 30 episodes since we've done a Know Your Note. But what it is is you guys go out to your truck or your buddy's truck or any truck, and you record the exhaust. Yeah, note. Start it up, let it rumble, maybe uh, juice it a couple times, and then yep. tell us that we have to figure out what that well what's producing that sound. Yeah, so we're going to try to guess the engine and what it's in. And sometimes we can guess one of the two. We have been lucky and guessed both. Was some, there was like an old uh, Toyota pickup truck know, that we, we got. We, we were super lucky. Yeah, so anyway, record it to the 657-205-6105 number or just send it to us as an attachment in an email. Yep. All right, uh, we have to thank Nissan. And uh, the Nissan Titan and Nissan Frontier are awesome trucks. If you're in the market for a new pickup truck, Put that on your list to go test drive. I think you'll be impressed with how quiet they are, the capability, how they ride. Just a great, dependable, durable, competent truck. I have been spending a lot of time in a regular old Titan. In fact, I've been borrowing a 2020 that has about 35,000 miles on it, and it drives like day one. It's super nice. So uh, if you're looking for a truck that you can count on, head on over to Nissan USA where you can build in price or down to your local Nissan dealer where they will have no idea who the Truck Show Podcast is, but you should test drive everyone on the lot and make sure that you put Truck Show Podcast on every stereo. No, no, there. no. What they do is they, they do selfies yeah. in the truck. And we send stickers? Nope. They they tag uh-huh. at Nissan USA and they tag at Truck Show Podcast. So the people at Nissan oh, Corporate go, see, who are these what? Truck Show Podcast oh, like people? That. Interesting. All right. New. Oh, and that you're just trying to get people off the stickers. Uh, no. you, <laughs> yeah, I, Dude, keep doing the stickers. Right. I'm gonna, yeah. Go into it's a Nissan good. dealership, put the podcast on CarPlayer or Android Auto, whichever one, and have it on the screen and take a selfie of you in front of it. Tag us and tag Nissan USA. That's a lot of asks. We're, yeah, but we're going to say- I mean, our, That's a hefty ask. Our guys and our ladies listening to the show are up for it. You watch. I bet we have five this week. Really? I don't know. I'm going to say 10, (laughs) maybe 30. All right. So earlier we talked about the bank's big ass filter. If you want a a high flow, great dust capacity filter, go to bankspower.com, type in your year make and model. But I wanted to flip the script a little bit, Holman. I forgot to tell you that the... Banks iDash Stealth Pod that is in your Jeep 392. Yes, the prototype. Is now available to everyone. And not a prototype now. No longer prototypes. Right. They are beautiful, uh, really sturdy mounts for your iDash. If you're think if you've got a Jeep, I know we make them for Banks has them for a lot of different trucks, but specifically the Jeep. Yep. You've been testing There's it out for a the lot last space, couple of weeks. And you guys have designed one that stays out of the way of the visor. So the other ones on the market go up in the corner of the windshield. You can't put your sun visor all the way down. And so the Banks one allows you full use of your visor, and it installs way better. No epoxy. You can do it with all hardware, and it fits the iDash perfectly, and it's exactly where you want it in line of sight. And I think you guys are going to make it so you can put it on the top lower or bottom That's of correct. the grab handle, right? Yep. Aaron, one of our mechanical engineers, is working on that now. But cool. right now, you can't wait. We've got like 120 of them in stock. I know because I just checked today. Well, how about this? If you want to go to... Uh, at ADV Jeep, at Adventure Jeep, ADV Jeep, that's my Jeep page. There's a picture of the mount with the iDash in it. Go check it out. So if you guys are looking for an excuse to buy a Banks iDash, th- this is your excuse. Why? Because you mount it now? Because now it's got a really sexy mount. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, know what else I love? I love uh, awesome companies who have great customer service and a ton of product. And oh, I'm you're talking welcome. about SDWheel.com. Oh, gotcha. So our new uh, partner who's going to be hanging out with us for a little bit. Uh, these guys are awesome. You heard Sam on the show, a lot of passion, they're enthusiasts, and the amount of brands and product that they carry is freaking unbelievable. They have the largest selection of in-stock wheels and tires. No matter the build or style, they got you covered. They'll mount, balance, and ship to you for free. Skip the tire shop, save yourself hundreds of bucks, and the hassle. Head over to sdwheel.com for your wheel and tire needs, or if you happen to look a little deeper on the website, Performance products, accessories, add-ons, cleaning Lights. product, the whole thing. So sdwheel.com. All right, guys. That was a great test run. Let's record the real show now. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's the best we got, dude. <laughs> that's, that's it. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. 
Some vehicles may have been harmed during the making of this podcast.